Everybody run for the hills. The dollar is collapsing. Oh my goodness, it's here. Pan and, pan and no, what do they say? Pandemonium is breaking out. Remember Hulk Hogan? The dollar is collapsing. Ah, we're all going to go bankrupt. There won't be any food. Ah. Check this out. All right, so I want to show you something here. We're going to go to uh, Seeking Alpha today. And I'm going to close my door. The euro falls to 16 month low against the dollar amid policy divergence. Huh, interesting. So we go to uh, uh, currency charts. We'll see the US dollar to euro, euro chart. So what you'll see here is right now, the dollar is at 87% of the value of the euro, all right, which is off from uh, back in uh, March of last year, it was at 88% <laughs> the value of the euro. Right here in uh, 2016 is that basically 95% of the value of the euro. So from here to there, it's off. However, from here, 80 is that 80 right there? The low for the year, December of last year, it was at 81% the value of the euro. So for every dollar, uh, for you would need basically one dollar and twenty cents for one euro, or now you need. One dollar gives you only 88 cents relative to the euro. So it's 12% discount to the euro. However, back here in June 2014, it has a 72%. Uh, so you need uh, basically one dollar would only buy you 72 cents worth of the euro, if that makes sense. So you can see a significant increase in the dollar from 2014 all the way to here, 2021. So that's up quite a bit. All right, so that's the euro, and that you know that that's we're not off, we're up, we're going up significantly from where we were. Right here, we're at 82, 81, and now we're at 87 or so. All right, good stuff. So, how about the dollar versus the uh, the the British pound? Because remember, the dollar is collapsing. Oh, again, collapsing from right here is trading at let's see, back then at 2020 in March, right when the pandemic hit, the pandemic is at 82 cents uh, for every. Uh, British pound. Now it's at uh, has collapsed against the, uh, the the pound seventy four cents. If you want to say it's collapsing, but that's still way up from where it was fifty eight cents. So basically, the dollar you almost needed two dollars to buy one British pound back then in two thousand fourteen. Isn't that interesting? So now from then to here is up significantly. Right, let's do the uh, Canadian right there. What they call the loopy or something? The loony. So here's Canadian. So the dollar actually in the U.S. buys one dollar buys one point two five one Canadian dollars or loonies. I think it's called the loonies, which is off from right here uh, one point three eight in 2020 March, but still significantly higher than what it was back here in 12, 2002 and 2013 and 14. And so basically, it's been you know, a little bit lower relative to the Canadian over the last uh, six years or so, but definitely within. I mean, it still hasn't collapsed relative to the other currencies at all. It's actually growing. It's getting stronger. And I imagine it'll continue to do so. Let's look at the Chinese um, right here, the yuan. And we can see the dollar was able to buy $7 right here, the highest in March of last year, I think. Is able to buy seven, and uh, so one dollar bought seven point uh, one wands Chinese currency. Now it only buys six point four two wands, but still way up, way above where it was just uh, seven short years ago. All right, so and then way above where well not way above, but you can see it's very volatile here and here and here. Um, so lots going on there. So the dollar has been falling relative to the Chinese one, which that's what Trump wanted, which is stupid, but. That's what we want to increase exports. All right, let's keep going here. We'll look at uh, the Japanese yen, always a good one. Oh, look at that. The dollar has been trading uh, right here. One dollar. So one dollar buys 113 uh, yen, uh, which is relatively where it's been over the last five, six, seven years or so. At one point, one dollar bought 124 yen back in 2015. And in 2011, it bought 79 yen. So, point being is, I want to show you. Uh, so, is there anything else I want to show you? I, have not, I wanted to show you one other thing here, real quick. I thought this was pretty cool. Let's see if we can find. Ooh, dollar versus gold ounce. There we go. It was it eighteen hundred or something like that? So here's a dollar versus the gold. All right. So it was down, 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 up, 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 down, down, down. So it's kind of like going, taking this little the price of gold right here, the dollar versus the price of gold. Um, I can't see what that gold ounce. I'm not sure what that. The prices. So I don't know. I guess you have to times that. I don't know how that works. But you can see the dollar is, is less than what it was for the price of gold five years ago, but it's more than it was 10 years ago. I thought this was pretty. Let's look at the dollar versus the Russian ruble. Again, going up in strength. 
So the dollar's been going up in strength the last 10 years. There's just no two ways around that. Anyone says otherwise, they'll know what they're talking about. But I thought this was pretty cool. You can see some uh, dollar versus a Cuban peso. Look at that, it's flat because this is just the uh, above market. It's not the black market. The peso says we're going to tag the dollar to 26.5 Cuban pesos. Not sure what's happening here, but the fell. But anyway, I'm not sure what that's about. Maybe do they get off the, the tag to the U.S. dollar? I don't know. Uh, go to Bitcoin. I have no idea. So let's uh, let's go to Israel. The shekel. Do they really call them shekels in Israel? Uh, the dollar has been dropping relative to the shekel uh, for about ten years. Okay, there you go. But uh, let's let's go back to. Uh, I want to show you some one of these uh, obsolete ones. We're going to start uh, Vatican City's obsolete. The Slovenian Luxembourg francs francs obsolete. I wanted to show you the Venezuelan thing, is, or the Zimbabwean thing. Hold on a second. Zambia, Venezuelan. Look at this. All right, so here, the the, the Bolivar was at uh, 4,300. 4, so they priced the, the Bolivar to the dollar, and they kept it at 4,300. And then they got they increased it a little bit, increased a little bit, kept it at 62.89, 63.49. They increased it. And then it went to 99. This is when the inflation is really kicking in. So do you think it's just a government printing press is what's causing this right here? Look at this. One dollar would buy you 417, whatever that is, bolivars. And now it's obsolete. So it's come back down to nothing because there's no uh, bolivar anymore. They got new currency. But the government printing press is what causes hyperinflation. Is this so there's no government printing like a trick crazy man when Chavez was in office? Of course there was. So what causes this right here? It's not the government printing press, man. Uh, is the economy falling off a cliff? Anyway, point being is the dollar isn't freaking collapsing. It's uh, actually in gaining strength. So all these naysayers, oh my goodness, just come come back with some evidence. All right, we'll see you.